All right, hello everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about resistivity and we're gonna do a little experiment with it. And talk about like how can we like compare different materials like copper and aluminum and steel. Like why do we use copper wires versus steel wires uh, with our circuits? And the key idea is resistivity. So resistivity is kind of like the opposite of conductivity. And there's an equation for it. Let me write it down for you. So, think about resistance. Resistance is that the, how much effort it takes for something to flow through uh, a material, or a wire, or a device. And we're going to talk about specifically wires here, because we use conductors for wires. So what affects resistance? Well, you can imagine if I had a really, really long wire versus a short, short wire. Which one's going to be harder to travel through? Well, if I have to travel through a short wire, that's pretty easy. I don't have to travel very far if I'm, a, if I'm an electron. If I have to travel through a long wire, I'm going to run, through, uh, run into a lot more bumps in the road, a lot more atoms I'm going to collide with. Uh, and so the trip is going to be a little harder to go through if it's longer. So length is one factor. Another thing that influences uh, the uh, resistance of a wire is uh, how big the wire is. If it's a nice, really big, open area wire, then I'm gonna be able to fit a lot more electrons through it easily. Think of like water in a hose. If I have a really, really big hose, water can flow really easily through it. But if I have a really, really small, skinny hose, and I try to put water through it, it takes a lot more pressure, a lot more voltage, I guess you could say, to get that water to go through it. Otherwise, it gets stuck. If you get any clog in the, uh, in the hose there, it gets stuck easier. So. The smaller the area, the more the resistance is too. So big area, easy, small area, hard. And the last thing is just a material property. How good of a conductor is it? And that's the resistivity factor. So I'm gonna write that equation down for you. Here she be. All right, very good. So here's the equation. Resistance, which measures the ohms, is dependent on the length. Length is L. The length of the wire in meters, if that goes up, resistance goes up. Area in square meters, if the area is bigger, resistance goes down. And this lucky looking symbol is the Greek letter rho. It looks like an E or like a P, but it's actually like a curly, uh, curly P or a funky looking E. And it stands for resistivity. It's measured in ohm meters. Ohm meters. It's basically saying like how, how good of a conductor this material is or how good of an insulator the material is. So, the bigger the value for resistivity, the better the insulator the material is. So that means the lower the number for resistivity, the better the conductor. So copper has a very low resistivity value, which is why we use it. Now, copper, silver, and gold are the three most common metals that have the lowest resistivity values. But the reason we use copper is because it's cheap. If you can imagine, like, if you built all of your wires out of gold, really expensive. Gold's way more expensive than uh, copper, and silver is also very expensive. So what we're going to do here is a little experiment. We have some different wires for resistivity, uh, and they're just like long loops of wires. So you can fit a bunch of uh, loops, uh, a bunch of wire into a small area by just looping around a, a coil. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some current mm -hmm. through th this loop of wire, and then through this loop of wire, and this mm. wire, and we have five different loops of wires. I want to run current through each one and take some data with that. Take some data. Now, each of these wires is a little bit different. And the thing that differs between them is this. Uh, uh, let's see if you can see this here. Ooh, there we go. So this first wire right here, it's 10 meters long. So it tells you the length. Then it tells you it's made of copper. And it tells you the gauge. The gauge is 22. So I'll talk about what the gauge is. That's like, it's like how big, how, how thick the wire is. The next wire is also 10 meters long. It's also made of copper, but it's a different gauge, so it's a different thickness. It's skinnier, it's thinner. The, the bigger the gauge, the skinnier the number. We'll talk about how to convert it to area. And then this is a, a third wire. It's 22 gauge again, it's copper, but it's 20 meters long, so there's a lot more wire. It's a longer wire. This one is also 20 meters long, but the gauge is 28. It's still copper. So all four of these are copper, and this one is a mixture, uh, it's an alloy, it's a copper and nickel alloy. Uh, so it's 10 meters, 
it's 22 gauge and it's a mixture of copper and nickel. Now we could compare other materials too, like aluminum, but this is kind of a nice setup because you can literally like connect two wires here, measure the current voltage, connect two wires here, measure the current voltage, measure the current here, measure the current voltage, and that way we can get resistance because if you remember, B equals IR. So if I look at that equation again, right here, if I replace, uh, if I use V equals IR to solve for R, what does that look like? Well, the right-hand side of the equation looks exactly the same. You have resistivity length over area equals, well, if V equals IR, then R equals V over I. V over I. So there we have it. Voltage over current equals resistivity times length of area. All right, so here I have a battery or a power supply, and I'm going to turn it on. And right now, you can hear it a little bit. I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't get too hot, because basically we're, holding, we're putting electricity to a wire, and there's not much resistance in the wire, so it could get pretty hot. So I'm going to turn the voltage down uh, to the, the lowest setting here. And we're going to measure the voltage and current in each wire. So right now it's, connect, it's connected to the 10-meter-long 22 gauge copper wire. And I just have one terminal connected to one end of the wire, another terminal connected to the other end. Now, to measure the voltage and current, I can use a voltmeter and an ammeter, or I can also use a multimeter. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the voltage and just keep that voltage the same for every single one. So, here I have my multimeter. If I want to use it as a voltmeter, I have to do two things. I have to take this red wire and change it to volts. There's an A on here for amps and a V for volts. So I'm going to change it to volts. Pow. And then I'm going to switch this dial to voltage. Okay. So now to measure the voltage, I just literally touch one wire, another wire, and it'll read the voltage for me. And we get a value of... 1.33 volts, 1.35. Now, I want to keep that 1.35 volts the same for every single wire. So that's not going to change. But then, what I'm going to change is I'm going to measure the current. So, if I want to use this as an ammeter, I need to switch this dial over to amps, and then I turn this over to A, and then I have to break the circuit. So I could disconnect one wire, I touch one part of the ammeter onto the, the wire I'm trying to measure, and the other part to the connection here, and I can get the current. So the first one is one, the current is 1.40. So the current for the first wire is 1.40. Then I'm going to keep the voltage the same. I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to move my terminal to the next uh, next wire, and then measure that current. So that current is 0.75. Now that's the uh, 10 meter 28 gauge copper. It's 0.75. Then I'll move it down the next one. And that current is 1.26. That current's 1.26. Move it on to the next one. And that current is 0.5. And move it on to the next one. The current is 0.14. Turn this off. Turn it off, so I don't fry anything. And I'm going to uh, show you those measurements at the end of this video here, so you have them. Take care. Okay, so filling in the table. Here's the table. We had copper, 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 and then a copper nickel alloy for the types of wires in that order. The length was uh, 10 meters, 10 meters, 20, 20, and 10. The gauges, which you will have to convert to uh, cross-sectional area is 22, 28, 22, 28, 22. Don't put the gauge numbers 
put the area, because you'll need to use that for the calculation. The voltage for all of them was 1.35 volts, about. Some of them were 1.33, some of them were 1.35. I think that was just depending on where I uh, connected the circuit. And here's the current values for, for amps, 1.4, 0.75, 1.26, 0.5, and 0.14 amps for each wire. So there's your data. Now you can use it to calculate resistivity.